Solving a real-world problem using the distributive property, Lesson 7.3c. Solving a real-world problem may involve using the distributive property. And remember, we can distribute from the left side or the right side. Either way, we're going to get the same terms. It's important to remember that when distributing into parentheses, the positive or negative sign goes with the number next to the parentheses. It's distributed with it. So we have 5 minus 3 times x plus 2. We take this entire minus 3 and distribute it to the x. So we have minus 3x, and we take this minus 3, and we also distribute it to the 2. We have negative 3 times a positive 2. That's going to give us a negative 6. The sign goes with it to this first term and to the second term. And we use the rules for multiplying integers, different signs, then it's going to be a negative. If they're like signs, it's going to be a positive. The Benson family had their bill at a restaurant reduced by $9.50 from using a coupon. They left a tip of $15.30, which was 20% of the reduced amount. How much was their bill before the discount? So we think the answer will be their bill before the discount. We need to write an algebraic equation, and we can write 20% as a decimal, 0 0.20 or 0 0.2. They mean the same thing. The bill minus the coupon is x minus 9.50. We can also write this as 9.5. We multiply the 20% as 0 0.2 by the x minus 9 and 5 tenths, and it should equal the tip dollar amount of $15.30. We can also write this as 15.3. So for step one, writing the equation, we have 0 0.2 times x minus 9.5 is equal to 15.3. Now, step two is, we solve the equation for x by using the distributive property. We distribute this 0.2 to the x, and we get 0.2x, and we also distribute it to the negative 9.5. And we find that negative 9.5 times 0.2 is a negative 1.90, but we can write it as a negative 1.9, and it's equal to 15.3. Now. Because this is a minus 1.9, we can add 1.9 to both sides. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And on this side, we've got 17.2. We've got 0.2x is equal to 17.2. We divide both sides by the coefficient 0.2, and we get that x is equal to 86. Their bill before the discount was $86. Remember, when you're dividing and you've got a decimal point here, we need to move it back behind it, which means we need to move it back behind this one, and now the decimal point's going to be here. When we do our long division, we get 86 for $86. Now we can check this to see if it's accurate. We had an $86 bill, and we subtracted the $9.50 coupon, which gave us $76.50. So this was their restaurant bill after the coupon, which means this is the number they're going to pay the tip based on. And 20% of $76.50 is 0 0.2 as a decimal, the 20%, and we have 76.5. We, we don't need to add the zero here, we can just multiply it as 76.5. When we multiply these together, we get 15.3, or $15.30. So yes, it checked out. Sam saves 15% of his income to buy a house. This year, his income was $5,000 more than the previous year. So he was able to save $7,200. What was his income in the previous year? So we think we have $7,200. That's what he saved this year. And it's 15% of this year's income. 
we need to find the previous year's income. So we write 15% as a decimal as 0 0.15, and we multiply 0 0.15 by X for the previous year's income plus 5,000, which should be equal to this year's savings of 7,200. So for step one, our equation is 0 0.15, that's the percent that he saved each year, and we're multiplying it by X, the previous year income, plus 5,000, that's how much his income increased this year, and it's equal to 7,200, that's this year's savings. For step two, we solve the equation for X by using the distributive property. We've got 0 0.15 times X and 0 0.5 times 5,000. That's going to give us 0 0.15X plus 750. When we multiply 0 0.15 times 5,000, we get 750. We count two hops in the decimals. That puts us right here at 750, and it's equal to 7,200. Step two is we use inverse operations. We want to get that x to one side of the equation. We have a plus 750, so we can minus 750 from each side. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate this, and we drop down the 0.15x, and here we have 7,200 minus 750. That's going to give us 6,450. So our equation is 0.15x is equal to 6,450. We divide both sides by this coefficient, 0.15. We have the same numerator and denominator, so this makes 1x. And when we do 6,450 divided by 0.15, we get 43,000. That means Sam's income the previous year was 43,000. Now we can check this to make sure it's accurate. His previous year's income was 43,000. He made 5,000 more this year. That means this year he's making 48,000. We know he's saving 15% a year, and we know that this year he made 7,200 in savings. When we multiply 0 0.15 times 48,000, it does equal 7,200. So all the numbers fit perfectly together. We know we did it correctly. When we need to distribute fractions, we multiply each term by the LCD, the least common denominator, to clear the fractions. We have a one-third that we need to distribute, and we have a one-fourth that we need to distribute. Well, their lowest common denominator would be 12. So we multiply 12 times 1 -third and get 12 thirds, and we multiply 12 times 1 -fourth and we get 12 fourths. We can simplify these fractions. 12 thirds is 4, and 12 fourths is 3. Now we can distribute this whole 4 to the x and get 4x, and this whole 4 to that 4 and get a 16. We get 3x plus 18 on this side. Now we can use inverse operations to isolate x to one side of the equation. We have a 3x here. We can take it away from both sides, and that's going to create a zero pair here. We have a plus 3x minus 3x, and on this side, if we have 4x and we take 3x away, we're going to have one lonely little x. It's like 1x, but we don't write the 1. We just write the x, don't we? And we drop down the 16. We drop down the 18. Now we have x plus 16 is equal to 18. We can isolate this x to one side by getting rid of this 16. And since it's a plus 16, we do minus 16 on both sides. That's going to create a zero pair here, get that x alone. And on this side, we get a 2. We know that x is equal to 2. It's much easier to use the least common denominator or lowest common denominator to clear fractions that are being distributed. So we just found in that equation that x is equal to 2. What would happen if we try to solve the equation without using the lowest common denominator? What if we just right away distributed the 1 -third to the x and the 1 -third to the 4? Well, we would get 1 -third x plus 4 thirds, and it would be equal to 1 -fourth x plus 6 fourths. 
Now we have a one-third x plus a four-thirds is equal to a one-fourth x plus a six-fourths. How are we going to do inverse operations when all the denominators are different? we're still going to need to give them a common denominator to use inverse operations. So we have to give them all a denominator of 12. So we still did it. We still found the least common denominator, trying not to use that way. And we have 4 twelfths x plus 16 twelfths is equal to 3 twelfths x plus 18 twelfths. Now we need to get x to one side so we can subtract this 3 twelfths from both sides, that's going to make a zero pair here, positive 3 twelfths minus 3 twelfths x. And on this side, we end up with just a 1 twelfth x when we take it away. We drop down our constants, and we have a plus 16 twelfths here. We can take away 16 twelfths from each side. That'll create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And on this side, we'll get 2 twelfths. On this side, we'll get 1 twelfth x. That means 1 twelfth times some number is equal to 2 twelfths, and well, that would be 2. x is equal to 2, just like we found previously, but it was so much easier to eliminate these distributed fractions by just multiplying by 12, their LCD, right away. We didn't have to deal with all these fractions. We're finished with Lesson 7.3. We're moving on to 7.4, which is in two parts. 7.4a is determining the number of solutions. That would be the number of solutions to an equation. When we're dealing with variables, an equation might have one solution. It might have several solutions. I hope you have a wonderful day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.